Hey, you've uh, made your first mix on UDJ, and um, that was just to sort of learn some of the features of UDJ and sort of get to the idea about how um, you're going to mix from one song to another. But there's some things that um, we need to learn so we know actually how to mix it well and to be um, make something that's a good mix. So there's a few things. So today we're going to talk about beat matching and um, there's a PDF here that you can click on I'm just going to show it to you now um, so there's beat matching and there's beat mixing and beat mixing is aligning the tempos or beats in a song so um, when I go to UDJ we're going to look at two pieces of music here first of all look at let's look at um, Grandmaster Flash and let's look at Run DMC Grandmaster Flash right here in this column it's giving me the tempo or bpms beats per minute so grandmaster flash is 101 beats per minute so um what a beats per minute is is if i sit there and i counted one two three four it's how many of those beats would occur in a minute and then if you look at Run DMC, it's tricky. It's 127 beats per minute. So it's a little bit faster. So on my second turntable here, I have Run DMC. It's tricky. If I slide this all the way over, I can see it's 100, rounds it up, 128 beats per minute. So here I have two songs that are very different beats per minute. So um, Grandmaster's Flash is slower than Run DMC. So um, back in the day when, when DJ was starting out and they were doing it with tier, with turntables, um, it didn't tell you what the beats per minute were. So the way that DJs actually figured it out was to actually play a bit of the song and they would count one, two, three, four, along with the beats. And they do that for 30 seconds and then they would times it by two and then that would give them the beats per minute. So they would actually put that, write that number on on the record um, or on the case of the record or something. So they would know. And, and a lot of it, when they were mixing two songs together, a lot of it would just be by ear. So knowing what the beats per minute are, are helping us decide what two songs are gonna mix together well. So if I'm mixing Grandmaster Flash, that the message, that's at 101 beats per minute. And if I'm mixing Run DMC, it's tricky, that's faster it's 128 beats per minute it's not really a very good mix so let me just um for example let me just show you kind of it's kind of an awkward mix so let's play grandmaster flash which is 101 beats per minute and if i now change it to run dmc's head foot play So it's not a good mix. It's very sort of awkward. So you need to think about like if somebody's like dancing in a club and you're transitioning from one song to another, it's supposed to be like a smooth transition to keep things going. But if you have that sort of like all of a sudden it gets super fast or all of a sudden you're with a, a faster song and it gets really slow, it kind of ruins things and kind of like um, – makes it really awkward. I mean, some DJs may do that on purpose for a certain reason, but generally you want to make sure that the beats per minute, the BPMs on the two songs that you're mixing are relatively close. Now, with um, with this program, um, what's neat about it is that it automatically sort of syncs BPMs for you. If I actually slide my crossfader right in the middle, what that's doing, you can see it's changing it to 128 beats per minute. If I play both, if I hit both songs, what it's actually done, it's actually speeding up um, Grandmaster Flash to 128 beats per minute. So whenever you make something faster, it actually changes the pitch or the sound of something. So it makes actually all the noise, no, the sound sort of higher. So let's listen to that now. So that's when the, um, the beats per minute is the same, is now synced to Run DMC. So now they're both at 128 beats per minute. Let me, let's just compare to what it sounds like if it's just original. Close to the edge. Okay, good tunes. Okay, so you can hear the difference. So having your crossfader sort of in the middle for you, or for you DJ is how you sync those beats per minute. So 
pause. So when I do actually start off playing Grandmaster Flash, it starts off 101 beats per minute. If I slowly drag that crossfader over, it'll make it gradually get faster and faster and faster and play to 120 beats per minute. So it's a smoother transition to run DMCs. So um, if I was going to mix these two songs together, then I would want to make sure that when I'm transitioning from one song to another that that probably goes a bit slower when I'm using my crossfader so people can, can slowly get into like the groove a little bit and move into that however it's not a great this isn't necessarily a great mix but that's one way that I can do that what would be a better mix to go with Grandmaster Flash if I look at that is something that has a beats per minute that's probably closer so if I look at this intergalactic it's not exactly 101 beats per minute, but it's much closer than Run DMC. So I actually a good, better mix with Grandmaster Flash is going to be the Beastie Boys. Okay, so that's going to make it much better because they're closer, the beats per minute are closer. Okay, so even though Intergalactic is much little bit tiny bit faster than the message it still is a smoother transition so this is how I'm going to choose what songs that I mix together so even though these are sort of all these songs that I put in my playlist are the same genre this is how I decide what songs and plan out which songs I want to play now another thing to keep in consideration using the beats per minute is how do I want my whole entire mix to go. If I was going to be using all five songs, usually you want to start things sort of a bit slower and then you want to move, um, you want to pump people up, right? And at the very end is when you really want to get sort of your faster, more powerful songs. So with these songs on my playlist, if I was going to use all five of them, I'd probably start off with them, with Grandmaster Flash and the Beastie Boys. And my fastest songs that I have here are It's Tricky and Salt and Peppa. And I probably work up to that. So that would be the order. So when you are doing um, a DJ, when you're making like mixes and your playlist, not only are you going to organize it then here by sort of genres and moods and things like that, but as a DJ, you would also, you could organize them. You know, um, we can't on here, but more sophisticated ones would organize things in terms of your beats per minute um, and just how you decide what songs are to go with another one and, and how you're going to sort of, you know, work your mix or if you're DJing, how you want the party to go. Okay, so those are some of the things that we need to keep in consideration. Okay, so that's the first part is just playing with the tempos and how we're going to choose our songs. Now, there's something else, though which is called beat matching. So it's a little bit different than beat mixing. So even though my beats per minute might be close or the same, I want to make sure that the downbeat is the same for both of them so they're aligned. Now, on UDJ, when I play the first song, up here you'll see You'll see that the different beats are moving, are the orange one, and they're moving through here, the turntable on the right or the red one. So the way that a piece of music works, most songs that are like in these genres and in pop music and things like that are four, four times, which means it sounds like this. It sounds one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Both songs need to be in 4-4 four, four time for you to be able to mix them. There are other songs that are 1-2-3, two, 2-2-3, three, two, two, three, but this is very rare. Usually songs that we're using in any of these variety of genres are 1-2-3-4. So that's why we're able to mix songs together, even if we're changing the beats per minute. So, But what we want to do is for um, ask us to do a better mix is to align the downbeat. So usually things happen on the downbeat. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that those beats as they're moving um, are the same. So what that's going to look like is this is when here the beats aren't matched, right? So my one turntable is is orange and the other turntable is burgundy, right? So that's when they're not matched. When they are matched, they will both be on the same one. So for you, DJ, we sort of do this manually. So let me show you how to do this. I'm going to start with my first one. I'm focusing here. So 
for a better transition from one to another, what I need to do is I know for me to start the second song, I want to align it with that. Sometimes you get it the first time, sometimes you don't. Okay, so now both of my songs are both beat match. Okay, so they're both going on the same damp beats together. I'm just going to show you what it looks like if it's not. Oh, try not to do it now. There we go. Oh, it's automatically doing it for me. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> okay, so that's when it's not matched, and when it is matched, they're both on the same one. So that way, when you transition from one to another, the one, two, three, four, even if it changes to a new song, it's still the one, two, three, four, and that way the beat is steady. Okay, so that's the next thing when you, um, another good way to make a good transition, good mix from one song to another one. Okay, so um, I want you to give that a shot. Then. Now I want you to try mixing two of your songs. I want you to pick out which two songs you think will work best, whether the two faster songs or two slower songs. You want to pick two songs then that are relatively close for the beats per minute and load them up. I want you to um, start with the one on the left. I want you to play it, and then I want you to count the beats and try and sync them up so that they match and match it there. And then I want you to um, have it nice in the middle and then see how they sound. Okay, so you're going to practice that.